it's um, it's an incredible production. We have been running uh, this, this show's been running since October 30th of 2003, and so this 30th, or 2004, three, yeah, 2003. So we, we're celebrating 15 years this October 30th. Wow. And um, oh my God, Brian. <laughs> oh, I'm such a crier. I'm gonna. <laughs> um, so, and just to tell you a little, a couple fun facts about the show, we um, there's almost a hundred people backstage working to make this thing go every night. Um, <clears throat> Twenty-four in the pit, if you can believe it. There's actually 22, and then there's a one whole room for a percussionist who watches the director on a monitor because there's so many percussion. He even has stuff on his hat that he hits. Uh, toys. And then a harpist who's also in her own room. And um, <clears throat> the show cost about $17.5 million to mount back in uh, 15 years ago. And um, it, it costs about a little over $800,000 to run every week. Wow. It's a huge, huge uh, undertaking every week. And um, luckily nothing has gone wrong in a long time, but we have had shows that we call a no-fly show, where the flying doesn't happen. <laughs> and and the, the ensemble has to get really low. When she, she just comes down, she just walks down stage and everyone gets really low to make it look like she's flying. <laughs> um, and uh, I joined the cast in May, on May 22nd. Um, and this is my 10th Broadway show. Wow. And <laughs> I get a little moved. I don't, where's Louise? She's here. She's here, Kevin. Is Louise here? She's here. Oh, hi, Louise. <laughs> so, Louise and I saw our first Broadway show sitting up there. <laughs> Sweetie Todd. And, um, don't cry, Kevin. So, I know. <laughs> and so, I always, um, every curtain call, I always point at that chair up there, <laughs> where I sat. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. So, oh, thank you. It's, I never take it for granted. It's really, it's a hard business. And um, <clears throat> I live out in LA uh, normally, and um, with my husband of 28 years. Wow. wow. Woo -hoo. It's, uh, it's 100 in straight years. <laughs> Patty here? Patty Craft? Oh, Patty? Yeah, Patty's she wasn't here. able to come. Oh, they had, oh, they had the baby. Oh, baby. Oh. Oh. So, I wanted to apologize. That's great. She sent three people. Oh, yeah? Patty Craft's family? No, did they not make the it? Yes. Oh, Patty. Patty was my first girlfriend. I wanted to apologize. <laughs> 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 and Te Terry Simpson in here. Terry. No, get Terry. She, she was it. the first girl I kissed. Oh wow! wow. <laughs> at the seventh grade dance at the Methodist Church, oh. <laughs> Peter Jensen's church. That, that dance. Peter's here. There. Peter's here. No, oh, hi, Peter. Yeah. Oh, thank you for coming. We're supposed to say our name. Peter <laughs> I, had pizza, I had pizza with you a couple months ago. <laughs> um, I, 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 I just can't even um, believe it. Thank you, Cheryl, for... for yeah. Yeah. Oh. This is so much better than a, than a reunion. <laughs> and it's 37 years, which I cannot... I, some of you I have not seen in 37 years. <laughs> Yes, much more entertaining. Although not for me, I was just a nerd, ball of nerves yeah. backstage. I'm sorry you had to wait so long for me to come on stage. <laughs> sorry, right but uh, he does get, he gets. It's a great role because everyone talks about him for an hour and a half. <laughs> there's a lot of build up. Uh, so what do you, what questions do you have about the production or about yes? Hi, Kim. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's great. Yes. Talk about full circle. And Stan Kotzen, do you remember Stan Kotzen? Yeah, sure. He came two weeks ago. He had directed that production. Oh, my God. Um, Oh, 
Um, my favorite role in high school was, uh, I think, was um, uh, either Billis in South Pacific or the King in, in Pippin. Yeah, Pippin. And Brian, Pippin. Brian and I were were uh, little co were comrades together, <laughs> Stu Pot and Billis. And um, uh, but in my career in, in, in Broadway, I did a play. The first uh, Tony nomination I got was for a play called Dirty Blonde, which was about Mae West. And it was about two New Yorkers who were obsessed with Mae West. And then it also uh, flashed back to biographical scenes in Mae West's life. And the girl played Mae West and I played all the men in Mae West's life. And it was a really, it was just a three-hander, three people in the play. And it ran for like a year and a half. And then I left that and went right into Susical to play Horton. And so that's another favorite of mine. And, and I got another Tony nomination. So there was, from 2000 and 2001 was like, I, they, they say there's stages of an actor's career. There's, who's Kevin Chamberlain? So you're Kevin Chamberlain. Get me Kevin Chamberlain. Whatever happened to Kevin Chamberlain? <laughs> <laughs> who's Kevin Chamberlain? <laughs> so that was the moment where it, I, it, it flipped to, so you're Kevin Chamberlain. And then it started to get me Kevin Chamberlain. And then I moved, I moved to LA to capitalize on the get me Kevin Chamberlain phase. And it worked out good. And, and, uh, but I would always come back and do shows in New York, I kept. I always kept my finger on the pulse here. I like living here better. I'm a, you know, I'm a Northeast guy, and uh, I can't stay far away from New Jersey. <laughs> um, uh, but most of my family has moved away from Morristown, sadly enough. But I get down there, and I don't know if this was a crazy, sweet honor. Um, Morristown Class Company, no, um, Morristown Theater Company. Yeah. I think it's it's the, the the what the Parks and Recreation used to be. Mm -hmm. They um, gave me a, an honor, and the mayor came and gave me a key to the city last oh, year, yeah. Yeah. which was cool. I was so embarrassed by it. <laughs> they, did a, they did a This Is Your Life, and all the adult um, uh, members of the theater company did like a review of every musical I've ever done in, on Broadway, which was so cool. It was really neat. Um, hi, Peter. <laughs> Yes. Peter Jensen. Actually, Peter and I were in madrigals with Louise and Brian. You wrote it on your phone, really? Actually, I was like, uh, I, I looked at our yearbook. First of all, you know, it was 1981, but when you turn to the title page inside the book, it said Nutshell 1980. So, who was the editor? Who were the editors? <laughs> But, so now actually I have two questions, and I looked up what you wrote to me. It's, Peter, it's been a real trip. A French philosopher once said, too many words on paper kills many trees. <laughs> There's yogurt in the chimney. Come see me on Broadway someday. Uh -huh. so, what does it mean, yogurt's in the chimney? Oh, and that was... when did you think you were going to be doing this? Well, actually, that involves Brian. Brian and um, Aaron Ulrichson, do you remember Aaron? Yes. Of course. So we would, we just thought coming up with, it was when you thought surreal things were funny or absurd things or non sequiturs. And so we were just saying two things that totally don't go into together. And for some reason, I, one day I went, there's yogurt in the chimney. And you know, when you're young, that's the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> I don't know what. What we were thinking. We were drinking Lambrusco. That was the Riuniti Lambrusco. That was the. That's another Brian. Oh. The first, the second question, which is, when did you really put it together that you wanted to be an actor? That you wanted. That moment. Well, I knew I wanted to be on Broadway when I was sitting in that seat up there. I knew I wanted to. I had a pounding headache at the end of the show. It was Sweeney Todd, and it was so mind-blowing and there's pictures up near my dressing room it's so weird and uh, I knew then but I think the first laugh I ever got which was Peter Pan at the Morristown High School but Parks and Recreation summer program when I got my first laugh as Smee and Peter Pan but I knew then that I wanted to because yeah, I can't I'm not good with hard labor yeah. <laughs> as you can tell <laughs> Brian you have Stand up. 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 Stand up.
Exacto. <risa> No, no, I wasn't doing anything good. What was it? I think. No. What was it? So you're downstage and you throw the two dice and one of the dice rolls off the stage and you're upstairs. Yes, it was South Pacific, I think it was. I'll just roll this one twice. Save for that. So in your professional career, you've done anything like that where something went wrong on stage and you had to save it. Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. Well, I've had I had a lighting instrument fall next to me. Ow. Um, and uh, it was something about the scene where I was in the middle of an argument and the lighting instrument. There's so much hardware up there. And I just, I just said, I'm not that I'm not that angry as it's on there. <laughs> but stuff happens all the time. I've actually gone up on lines. I've gone totally dry on on stage and you just have to Bumper and, and and push through, and you help other actors. Um, but I've had I've had a lot of scenery um, mishaps, stuff that doesn't roll on when it's supposed to, and um, so you, you'll just go, ladies and gentlemen, this time there's supposed to be a bet on the stage. <laughs> well, you know, you just have to roll with the punch. Line. But I can't believe you remember that. That's wild. That's wild. Yes. Um, I'm Diane Simpson. I'm Sherilyn's niece. <laughs> um, my kids used to watch you on the Disney Channel all the time, and Jesse, so they're a little starstruck right now. Um, do you enjoy television as much as the stage? Um, I enjoy the money of television. <laughs> um, Jesse, Jesse uh, is the gift that keeps on giving, because every time it runs, I make a residual. And it's on Netflix now, and now it's on, you know, people buy DVDs, so you get a piece of that. I wish I had a piece of this because but because it paid it, this show paid back its investors in 14 months. Oh wow! So it's making a profit of over a million dollars every year. Okay. So it's made the investors very very happy. Um, yeah. But you know they always say don't invest in a Broadway show. Yeah. You know you can you can you can't make a living on Broadway, but you can make a killing. I think that's the phrase. <laughs> Um, so it's very rare that shows do as well as this. Do you enjoy this more though? This stage? Um, so I enjoy this because I can control my performance. I have no control over the final product on film and TV because the editors, they can edit, edit out stuff for time or just, you know, or your best line, it'll be, uh, they'll, they'll shoot, they'll cut to someone's reaction while you're talking off camera. But I know every night I'm responsible for every line and every, everyone will see what I have to give every night, and I get to edit my own performance. And I, I also get to direct my own performance, because after, after a show, and I'm like, I didn't get a laugh there. Like tonight, I, there's, a la there's a lot of uh, Trumpian lines in this yeah. show. Yes, and, there uh, is. Uh, the wizard is very much that, and it gets these wonderful groans of, uh, of, of recognition. And uh, there's a line that says, um, uh, uh, where I'm from, we believe all sorts of things that aren't true. We call it history. Yeah. And, and sometimes that I've been working on that line, trying to figure out how to land it. And so every night it's different. And so that I'm fine tuning. It's fun to fine tune it. You can't fine tune, you get two or three takes and, and then it's, it's set in there for history. I mean, I look back at movies I did 20 years ago and I'm like, oh, why did I do that line that way? So that's the answer there. But you do make a lot more money yeah. in TV and film. Yeah. Uh, this script? No. 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 No little lines? No. It's still relevant, isn't it? Isn't that fascinating? Just history keeps repeating itself. Um, yeah. Any other? Any other? Yeah. Oh. Richard's wife. I'm, I'm Janice Richard Gray's wife. <laughs> no, me. I just just follow up on that. Um, when you said you, you try to figure out how to land the line, is it that you're not changing the line? It's just how you're. Uh, I sometimes change the. You can't rewrite the line. You cannot yeah. change the words in a play yeah. at all. It's the intention. It's the the the, the pitch, uh, the timing, the speed of it. Right. Comedy is so fragile. So it can be, uh, you know, even louder, or you need to slow it down so people hear it. 
I'm way over there when I say that line, and I'm very conscious of opening up because there's a whole group of people here that, as soon as you turn your head away, you know, they're not. So it's very technical. Yeah, I'm Richard. I'm Janice's husband. <laughs> uh, just on that point, do you feed off of the crowd yeah. in this? And so, do you? Yes. Is there a part of it where if the crowd's dead, if it's a part of you? If the crowd's dead, we are dead. <laughs> it, it gets long. <laughs> you guys were amazing, especially Woo! in my entrance. <laughs> <laughs> I can always tell when there's a lot of kids in the audience too. I'll get an entrance applause and there's a lot of, you know, my demographic of 6 to 16. <laughs> Which is so bizarre. My, my life is so weird now. That show. Yeah? Okay. Well, it's hard. It's really hard because you watch the show. You get you get a, a week or two to watch it while you're rehearsing it. Mm -hmm. um, I had a totally different take on the wizard than the guy before. Um, Kristen had different ta the takes than Amanda, um, but there is you can hear some of the because the original cast had the dialogue written for them and tailored for them, and it was changed during previews when jokes weren't landing. And they came up with bits, but there's also stuff in the in the play, like for instance when she goes, um, uh, she takes the wand. Glinda Voigt takes the wand and goes ball gown. <laughs> that's all Amanda. That that that's her her take on that. They give you free reign in 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 certain uh, areas, but you're not allowed to change the words. You know, it's it's a uh, but it is and it's a revolving door. We have our Fiero is leaving tomorrow. We have a new Fiero, a guy, another guy from the Disney Channel, Ryan McCartan. Do you know the kids know him? He was on Live and Maddie. And so he's coming in. We rehearsed him uh, the last, uh, this past week. So you're constantly rehearsing new people. That's the strange thing about a long run. Yeah. It is, you're constantly in rehearsal. And, and the first night you go on is the first night you do it with the orchestra. That's what's scary. Wow. Wow. You're, you're only doing it with piano, bass, and drums in rehearsal. So it's a little, it's a totally different experience. And when there's 1,930 people, it changes the sound. And um, it's very, it takes, you know, I've now done it 120 performances, and I'm just now getting into the groove. Hmm. I'm just understanding it now. Linda Christie? I know. <laughs> Do you know, like how you just said, I am contracted through March, and then I prob I hope hopefully I may extend. This is the best job. <laughs> I have about 19 minutes of stage time. <laughs> so, is your husband here with you? Uh, no, he executive produces and is head writer on a TV show on Freeform, um, which used to be ABC Family. The kids probably know it. It's called Siren. It's about mermaids. It's about it's a, a an evening nighttime drama about mermaids. So they're in their second season. Yeah, he was supposed to come here and be here with me, but it got picked up for a second season. So um, we had rented out our house and everything. So he had to get an apartment there. And, uh, I had an apartment, so we're, we're by coastal now, which is great. After 28 years, after 28 years, I am loving it. <laughs> me and my dog Samantha. Yeah. Eight shows a week. We're off. Uh, we have uh, two Saturday, two Sunday. I have to do this. We all do this again at eight o'clock tonight, oh, wow. and then two and seven tomorrow, and then we're off Mondays. So we have six days. Yeah, it's Tuesday through Thursday at seven p.m. Friday at eight p.m. Two and eight on Saturday. Two and seven on Sunday. Wow. Yep. Uh, there no matinee. Yeah, we do the Sunday night instead, but we just change that. We usually did a Wednesday matinee. Yeah, I liked that better because you had Sunday night and Monday night, and then you didn't have to go back to Tuesday. It's tough. It rules your life, and vocally, you have to constantly, you know, the girls, those are inhuman roles. They have to scream their lungs out twice a day, yeah. And Jessica, who just started a couple uh, weeks ago, she has an album out. You should check it out on iTunes. 
Jessica Vosk. She's amazing. She's a big star. When did she start? What? When did she start? Jessica started about four weeks ago. Oh, wow. She's great. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and that, I mean, that end of the first act is so thrilling, isn't it? Oh. It's a cherry picker. She backs up into a cherry picker, and it rises up. Oh. That's it's really cool. It. It's really cool. And if you haven't noticed, this whole stage is on a slant, which is very difficult for the dancers to dance on. And there's a P, there's two PT people on staff. Uh, it's it's big. And why is it on a slant? Uh, it's a the the it's an optical illusion for the audience. Although the tour does not is not on the slant um, because there's so many injuries. And I had a bad back after the first month just turning around and it's just your feet are always kind of kind of wow Who I, yeah bruce willis yes that was my first movie that was 20 24 years ago he, it was my first it was my first uh introduction to celebrity so he had a whole entourage and that was fascinating it really was I ran into him on the street one time, and he remembered my name. I was like, yeah, that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce remembered my name. <laughs> yeah, I still get starstruck with celebrities. And, and now I see, when I go outside um, and sign autographs, to see the little kids looking up at me, having, I see that, you know, what I saw in, when I was yeah. a kid. And I don't take it for granted. I, I try to spend as much time it's, it only sucks when you're in a hurry, you know, and you can't really, and everyone has a camera now, and everyone wants to take pictures, and they, they're like, oh, wait, it's not in focus. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just... You can't delete them, you don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I miss those Insta Instagram... That's Sue Stern. Hi, Hi, Sue. How are you? So, I have a daughter here, and she's taking Broadway theater in high school, and she probably too shy to ask a question so maybe just a, a few Project words Susan, about we can't hear oh I'm sorry <laughs> sorry Susan so, <laughs> so I have a daughter here and she's interested in Broadway theater she's taking courses and I'm sure she's too shy to ask but how did you just sort of get into it like was well it I, I always say the first rule is do as many plays as possible that's how you learn and that was you know so lucky by the time I graduated high school I had done about 20 plays because of the Parks and Rec program. Mm -hmm. There was a winter program that um, Barry Moore, I don't know if yeah, any right. remember yeah. Barry. Yeah. Barry used to direct um, stuff. We did um, like Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. We mm -hmm. toured Christmas Carol and and then Concert Choir and Madrigals. Uh, you know, that, that was a lot of uh, learning how to perform. Get in front of people and perform. That's the only way. I mean, I'm, a, I'm not a big fan of acting classes. I went to college and got a Bachelor of Fine Arts at Rutgers. Rutgers! <laughs> but I went because it was 700 a semester when I went. You know, I was the only one of my brothers that got out debt free. Um, but it was, it's, it's classes and go see theater. Knowledge is power. You know, there's a lot of dumb actors out there. So, you know, read about theater, read plays, and, and go see plays. And I know it's pro cost prohibitive sometimes, but there's a lot of, uh, we used to go as a kid to People's Light uh, yep. mm -hmm. over in Malvern mm -hmm. and uh, go in the forest and the Schubert Theater. And uh, I remember Barbara Fine, do you remember Barbara Fine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She brought us all the time to plays in, in Philly, it was amazing. We really got a lot of art and culture back then. I was surprised. And David, uh, did David Rohde leave? Did, oh, was he here? He had to, yeah, he had to meet a friend, but um, yeah, he was one of my, Inspirations too. He's one of my favorite he was a great teacher. Should we go and have drinks? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. We have to get a picture. Yes. Yes. Actually.